I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Lock and Key After Show. Tonight, we're getting into Season 1, Episode 3. It rhymes, guys. I love it. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to talk about more uh, more of the keys that we've d discovered in tonight's episode. We'll also see Echo on her war path. And, of course, we've got news and gossip, our special segment, and predictions. But over to my left. I have my lovely co-host. Hey guys. Hello. Hi. So to my immediate left, I have Bryant, who is our resident fantasy fan. Yes, love all things fantasy, vampires, werewolves, and keys. Let me know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we also have our Darby Stanfield fan, Janice. Hey everyone. I love Darby, but everyone here kind of suspects her character Nina, so. That's not very fun. <laughs> Time will tell. Time will tell. And we also have our journeyman. We also have Lauren at the end. That's right. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi. <laughs> and your Short moderator, Francesca Earl. <laughs> All right. So, guys, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. I feel like this episode, it just we just ramped things up. We went from zero to 85. Yes. Real quick. So. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it got uh, pretty dark. Oh, did oh I was going to say, um, I had predicted with the last episode that they were going to go into like a carnival or you arcade did. of some Absolutely. kind. So it wasn't a carnival and dad wasn't in that part. But it was interesting to see that it was uh, that it was Bodhi's head and the difference between Bodhi's things in his mind and Kinsey, who we see go into her mind later on. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, you were on top of it. Congrats. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Props to you. What did you guys think? I really, really liked this episode. I love dark things. Brian will disagree, but <laughs> <laughs> I like seeing people getting killed. I like blood. I like gore. So this was absolutely fun for me to watch. So oh, I'm at the end. Wait, where was the gore? There was no gore. <laughs> Not yet. I was like, Not wait, yet. I I'm just watched it. General, <laughs> a general <laughs> statement about gore. Yes. I love it. I feel like we saw more gore last time with the... The explosion. Of yes, the, the blood. Death. Explosion, yeah. yes. The um, splattery. <laughs> splattery. <laughs> yes, but I also agree. I love this episode. It's really, really picking up in the season. Three episodes in, we were seeing more characters. We're seeing development of the, char the main characters. So I'm loving it. Can't wait to see more. Yeah, we really got to see, going back to that darkness thing, we got to see Echo at her worst. Is it the worst? I don't know. She literally threw I mean, a kid she's in front of the plane. She's killed someone before. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. She has, yeah. Yes. But she has this is, no... Yeah, kids. Like, kids. come on. There's a line. Yes. So apparently she, she has does no not line. See it. Uh, yeah. She has no... Her, she has. her moral standard is no. in a completely different direction. I agree. <sighs> yeah, right well, now we don't really know what's driving her. Like, yeah. what her end goal, like, what is her motivation? We don't know that yet, so yeah. it's going to be cool It'll to be find that out. It'll be interesting to find out what that is. But, so, as Lauren mentioned, we did find out the end of the second episode and find out where they went. They went into Bodhi's mind, his mm -hmm. thought life, which is really playful and kind of what you would expect his mind to be, very imaginative. Um, and, of course, Lauren was right, was right in his guesstimate of what the key was about. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think what what was fun about that is I'm sure we all dream of being able to go inside our minds back to some fun memories. Now, we didn't with him really get into any of the, the dark memories, but we certainly did with Kinsey. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, you talk about an angsty teen boy and somebody who's compartmentalized their thoughts that it's a shopping mall and it's, it's all organized. the stores, right? Very it's organized. so organized. <laughs> I think the production designers oh, that yes. came up with those ideas. Congrats, of, guys. You guys yeah. killed it in yeah. this episode. It was really beautiful to watch. And we congrats. really need them to be guests on the show because I'd love to celebrate <laughs> them. So come yeah, on down. Come on the show, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of Kinsey's mind, one thing I did notice and I'd love to get you guys' thoughts on is so we see Rendell giving each of the kids what seems to be the same story, but he gave each of them a unique ending. We don't mm -hmm. know Bodhi's ending. Why do you guys think that he did that? I definitely think it's a testament to their relationship. I mean, mm -hmm. we've all known this. Like Parents always say they don't have favorites, but it's mm -hmm. quite clear that Kinsey was his favorite. They had a very special connection. And so his little girl. Yes, his little girl. So, of course, I think it was kind of that whole, I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but maybe with, like, Tyler, he was trying to maybe toughen him up, kind of just give him that whole, like, 
push through it, got, but got to be a man kind of thing. And with Kinsey, it was like making things that are positive and a happy ending. And like you said, we don't know Bodhi's ending. Hopefully, it would, maybe it was a little bit of both because he's a little bit younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's what I think is that Kinsey's just his favorite. So obviously, she was going to get the happy ending. So <laughs> all I right, we agree. Yes, you think yeah. he was. Interesting. Lauren, what do you think? Uh, I, I kind of agree. Um, I don't have anything to add. Sometimes <laughs> <Honestly>. I sometimes <laughs> I become yeah. sometimes I become a viewer of my own show and mm-hmm. really just chew on what other people think. Interesting. And that's one of the things that I'm I'm just kind of observing. I don't know if I completely agree with you guys. I think that's a valid point. I think it could be that, but I don't know if it's as much of a, or I I don't know if I think it's as much of a favoritism thing, as much as he sees different things in each child. Every parent knows their child and knows what they struggle with, what they're good at. So I think maybe he saw different things in each of his children and he gave them a story that they needed Mm -hmm. that would help them in whatever area of their life they're struggling with. I don't know. I also try not to think that parents have favorites. (laughs) I'm I'm also that person, but... I think I can say that because I'm the youngest and I actually am the favorite, so. <laughs> I mean, I may or may not That's be, true. but. Yeah, my little sister gets all the love. It's okay. Middle child. <laughs> oh my gosh. Aww. I'm raised by middle children. They're, they're, they're great to be raised by. I yeah. feel like they distribute the love very well. That's what I do, honestly. I'm always like, who is not getting enough? Like, <laughs> you. Okay. You. <laughs> you get more love. You get more love. Well, speaking of love. Lauren, do you have a special message for our fans out there? Yes. So thank you very much for uh, continuing to watch the show Lock and Key, which is amazing, and also watching our after shows. We are the ESPN of talk, and we would love you to leave comments if it's on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the show so you know when a new episode is going to drop. And let us know your thoughts because we want to reply. We want to talk about that on the show. We'd love to give you a shout out. If you're listening to the audio only version, uh, give us a review and a rating. Let us know what you think. And uh, Instagram, follow each of us. Let us know what you think. See pictures of my cats and whatever else you like to share. We have hobbies outside of watching TV, one or two. (laughs) But thank you so much for continuing to watch and keep the comments and the ratings going. Thank you. you. All right, so let's get into Rendell. We found out in this episode he is hiding secrets. Everybody's hiding secrets, so that's just a thing. Um, But we get to hear a little bit more of his story, and we're introduced to... We were introduced to Ellie before, but... This time, I feel like we really get to dig into their story a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think now that we know that Rindle is officially, a, he's not a liar. He just doesn't tell the whole truth. <laughs> <laughs> I want to jump right into that because I caught it last time that I think Ellie is going to play a huge part role in this in the series um, and just really kind of keep the series going so I think she's done that just in the little few encounters we had with her already she's already been so impactful um, and definitely I think that her and Rendell have a really strong connection somehow so I think there's definitely going to be a storyline with that mm-hmm. um, but for sure I definitely want to talk about her at all the things she did going to the well um, her dinner with Nina just different things also dinner with Nina why is she leaving the kids at home again seriously I'm calling CPS <laughs> I can't cannot. even deal we cannot she, oh she's, she's, just, she's trying to figure her own stuff out yes. she, she does not have time for her kids <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just, I'm being super shady but I love it so she keeps complaining about sorry to cut you off no, she's right. like oh I missed so much time and I was an alcoholic and like, now you're sober you still don't want to spend time with them like yes I'm confused what's the disconnect here yes but see now that we know that Rendell was hiding from Things. Exactly. I wonder if she always sensed that, if they always had, um, sometimes people can sense that there's some sort of disconnect, there's something their partner's hiding. Definitely. So I wonder if that affected her relationship. I don't know, I'm going super deep as always. Yeah. And, <laughs> we love we it. That. And <laughs> when, when uh, was it episode two, when they go into the mirror? And they pull their mom out with the rope. Or, yeah. yeah, in episode, episode or episode one, one. Yes. there was something that was said that made her look change, just like that. And that's what I'm wondering: is right. they said something that made her remember something, or mm-hmm. a thing in her brain oh. changed. snapped, changed, sure. and now we're seeing a lot of people, uh, other characters very much hiding something. We can see that. With mm-hmm. her, I'm wondering if she knows more than we're led on to believe, but she's 
not really revealing it in her expressions or what she says. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we do, so Ellie, she and Ellie go out to dinner. We hear more of Ellie's story. We also see Ellie go to the well and leave a key. Apparently she knows about the key thing. Um, and at the end, we're sitting with Nina as she's going through a yearbook and discovering these symbols. There's just a lot, a lot being revealed all at once. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Let's start at the high school. Do you think that what Ellie told Nina is true? Do you think that's actually what happened? I don't, <laughs> for sure. Especially now that we she went to the well. That was yeah. such a huge foreshadowing for me. I feel like there's something connecting to the well, especially when um, she was calling out. She meant she called out to Lucas, who apparently is the person who died in that sea cave that she mentioned about. So air quotes. Yes. Yeah. Cave. I felt like that was too specific of a term to use. Sea cave. Yes. So, in the river. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely think that she's not telling the truth. There's something more, and she has a key, so she obviously knows everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think Echo might be on like a vengeance war path towards um, towards Ellie and Randall? And like the, she was part friends? of their friend yeah. group. And maybe they like, maybe it was a prank that went wrong and she I fell mean, in the well yeah. or something. Like she's um, like, oh. I know so she, she did very that summer vibes. <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. right. Exactly. I don't know. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Because she seems like she's out to get something. She's like. You know, on she, a warpath, like you said. Yeah, she's yeah. she's angry and she's yes. killing people left and yeah. right. <laughs> she doesn't care about the kids. Yeah. Like, hey. Now yeah. we've been calling her Echo, but I feel like Echo may be somebody else besides Echo. Mm. Yeah. When like, Ellie went, went over story. and called down to Lucas, I'm like, wait, are there multiple people down there? We only yeah, know exactly. Echo was down there. That's true. Is Echo Lucas? Yes. Hmm. Uh, that's a possibility Ooh. yes on a vengeance path that's a really right. trying to cool. ruin everyone else's life because their life was ruined yeah mm -hmm. i don't know that'd be really interesting to get into but all in all so we we don't trust ellie is that is that oh how no, we're no 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 i would love to because i love her character <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. i love her character i love her as an actress you know <laughs> the fosters same but <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think there's something shady with her. There's something shady with the uncle, who, you know, Duncan, who's like, uh, you know. He doesn't um, remember, quote unquote. He, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of shade going on. For sure. <laughs> in lock and, lock and key town. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, speaking of Duncan, so we find another key. We find the ghost key and Bodhi goes off on another adventure by himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is my does. favorite key so far. <laughs> I mean, it, it was really cool. The graphics were cool. Yeah. It gave me some Casper the Friendly Ghost vibes. Yeah. Um, but he got to meet his great grandfather, who yeah. gave us the tea. Mr. On, Chamberlain. Right. Gave us the tea on Rendell and Duncan and the truth. Yes. Uh, so it looks like they are well aware of these keys and they are well aware of what they do. What did you guys think of that? I think there's a reason why Chamberlain decided to stay, even though most of his ancestors oh, have passed away and yeah. I was like yeah everyone just everyone chooses to stay or go but like, you know I chose to stay maybe he's trying to see something through we don't know it yet and mm. we might I hate to predict right now but yeah. I mean he seemed very nice and like very welcoming to mm -hmm. Bodhi um, I just don't know why he's still there I agree, Aww. like, um, as a huge fan of fantasy, that's always a big, like, arc with, um, like, ghost characters is, like, mm -hmm. needing to pa like needing to see something through to pass exactly. on. So mm -hmm. I agree, like, maybe he needs to... Unfinished business. Yeah, some kind of unfinished business for him mm -hmm. to pass on or move on. Um, and maybe Bodhi will be the one to help him with that. Yeah. And it's also a grandfather character, you know, even though he's a great-grandfather. I think there's a comfort when you think about a grandfather who is kind of there in a, f in a nice, friendly way. Like, sure. I mm -hmm. feel like... That'll be the comfort when we're scared out of our seats because other mm -hmm. crazy things are going on in the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of wondered after hearing you, Janice, I wonder if he's kind of the house guardian in a, in a way. Mm. Because it seems like there are some, I mean, obviously there's supernatural elements, but I wonder if there's demons involved and people mm. who have Definitely. negative you know, they some warring between good and evil. Sure. So it would be interesting to see what role the grandfather plays, or even if he's more of a guardian role in the sense that he gives Bodhi advice, and maybe Bodhi's the warrior, or maybe the kids are like a combined warrior, like mm -hmm. an Autobot. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but it, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, one thing I also wanted to bring up too, so at the end, we did kind of end on a little bit of a cliffhanger. 
we did a horse in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we see Echo. She reappears, and this time she's not with Bodhi. She is with Kenzie, who yeah. went into her own thought life by herself. That seems to be the trend here. Everyone <laughs> just likes to do things on their own. What do you? What did you guys think of that? I thought it was interesting that she didn't go see Bodhi. She clearly knew that he's been finding the keys. But how, somehow she ended up with Kenzie. Yes, I was definitely intrigued by that too. One, how did she get there? Mm-hmm. Like, if Kinsey has that key to go into your, your mind, how did um, Echo get there? Um, also, I, yeah, I agree with you that I feel like there was something that she was looking for or something that she was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, not going after Bodhi this time, but looking after Kinsey, I think kind of goes back to maybe like how we were talking about with like the antagonist like trying to get prey on somebody. So mm-hmm. as opposed to like preying on the innocent kid, it's kind of like on the vulnerable teenager kind of thing. I just thought of something. Do you think there's an order? Because she mentioned that specific key. Mm-hmm. And again, she went after Kenzie looking for that key. Yeah. Didn't go after Bodhi. So I wonder mm. if there's an order or That's if there's a, a very, she very needs that key to carry out a specific discovery. task. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys? Again, I'm thinking again of that game Mist that I used to play, the one where you, in Mist. So in, in the game Mist, you're on an island. You don't know why. You're on the island and you start to uncover little by little these clues that tell you the mm-hmm. story about the people and the family that live there. So in my mind, I'm that's how I'm kind of feeling this show is going is little by little we're discovering things and maybe the keys have a certain order that reveals something else. Mm-hmm. That adds another element to Echo that she's methodical. She's got a reason for doing the things that she's doing, not mm-hmm. just seeking anybody anywhere. Yeah. Also, we forgot to mention that Ellie had a key of her own. She did. Which we don't mm-hmm. know what it does. And she took it to the well. So That's true. what was she trying to do with it? Yeah. yeah it'll be interesting to see. And she that set that it is. on the top, right? Yeah. So she, she had, didn't use yeah. it to get in, right? To no, inside she, to maybe, unlock. But she had a key to the gate, which is already weird. Um, <laughs> yes. It could be that key or it could be another key. Okay. But then she set the key and then she called out to Lucas. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Time will tell. But. That's it for episode three. Mm-hmm. Next up, we're going to move into our special segment. With yes, guys, I'm excited. Yes. This one, like I mentioned, is my favorite key so far. I want to fly someday. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Lauren was talking about how when he was a kid, he wanted to fly. Oh and, yeah, I know. used to have. I love the dreams where I would get to fly around, Same, and it was like, and it was just like Bodie, just flying with my arms out. You know, aspirational. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about what we would do if we were invisible. Because, you know, when... <laughs> That's our little sound effect. <laughs> yeah. When Bodhi finds the skeleton key, he basically turns into a ghost and he becomes invisible. So we're trying to wonder, what would you do if you were Bodhi? Or if you found a key that could turn you invisible, where is the first place you would go? What would you do? Anyone? Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thought provoking. I know, very. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just want to like snoop on people's conversations and like Ooh. hear what they're saying yeah, about you. Exactly. Like, what yeah. y'all talk about? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny because when I was a kid, I, d- I always dreamed of being able to do that to get insight into what people were thinking. Mm-hmm. But I there's nothing now that I'm oh. Uh, I think I would like to sneak into some award shows like the Oscars, the Grammys. Tickets are very expensive, and I guess as a ghost, you don't need to buy a seat. That's true. So, yeah, that's I'm going to stick with that for now (laughs) until people comment and tell me how weird that was. You can go see Hamilton for free. Yes! (laughs) Who wants to join? Uh, Yes, piggybacking off that, I will be at Ariana Grande's next tour or Selena Gomez. (laughs) tickets yeah i love that um which concert would you like to go to (laughs) Uh, you know i'm not really in there's no one okay i guess i have to think of it because it's free because nowadays there's no one i would actually pay for (laughs) being shady to the whole world but they get expensive and i just Mm -hmm. i'm just just saying but i would like to go into a room where some key decisions are being made you know even if it's at a studio and hear Mm -hmm. what some of the executives are talking about because i feel like sometimes what goes on behind closed doors we have one perception but to actually hear people arguing you can see their true colors you can see why decisions are being made definitely so i'd be a snooper in that regard get the tea Mm, get all the tea yeah (laughs) i do that too (laughs) (laughs) janice where would you go 
Um, I, th- I mean, I said Hamilton. Uh, what else would I do? Mainly sh- sea shows. Yeah, sea, sea very shows. Expensive shows. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly yeah. don't know. I'm not that creative. Um, okay. Yeah, I just like freak out honestly. I'm just like, oh, I'm a ghost. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. That's Thank fair. you guys for sharing. Yeah. 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 All right, well, next up, we have News and Gossip with Brian. Woo! Yeah. Woo. So, actually, shout out to Lauren. He actually was the one that kind of piqued me onto this. But um, we actually have, so, on the first episode, we mentioned that the writers are already in the room for season two. They're kind of penning it. We're going to see where it goes. And Princess mentioned the Amber Light. So, what we're thinking now, we recently discovered that the show, even before um, we get anywhere, it has its own Instagram page. So, usually, um, content on Netflix is posted from the Netflix Instagram page, but the show actually has its own lock and key Netflix. So, it's definitely a good sign for the writers being in the room and its own Netflix, uh, its own Instagram page that the show is doing well. And we're hopefully going to get yeah. that renewal. So, yeah. not yeah. a lot of shows have that. You know, like if they create a, sh- a page, an Instagram page for them, that means they see longevity and they want to see it for multiple seasons so we're really excited about that yes so hopefully we get that renewal and you'll see more of us yes. <laughs> just saying just saying thank you for that brian thank you yeah. all right guys so let's get into one of my favorite parts of our show predictions your after buzz tv predictions in a number of directions because everybody's a little shady except for <laughs> honestly um, but what are some of you guys' predictions where are we going i think the kids are going to confront their uncle about not telling them that the house is magical because right yeah. now he's like completely uh, mysterious. He hasn't said anything about the house. He's just like, oh yeah, I hate this house, giving it the finger and all that. Mm-hmm. So I think Bodhi might confront him and say, hey, like grandpa or great grandpa told us, you know, you were you and you and my dad were like flying around this house. Like, why didn't you mention that? You know? Sure. Okay. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of curious to see where Kinsey goes since she killed off her fear, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, uh, um, automatically I think, okay, she's going to be strong-willed. She's going to want to go out on that date that she wasn't sure about before. So my prediction is that it's going to change her more than we would think mm-hmm. just by conquering her fear of her of killing her fear. Hmm. Did that make sense at all? Yes. <laughs> it was so deep, I don't even know if I know what I said. We're under. <laughs> I'm going to piggyback off that with dating. So speaking of dating, we just saw like a small little snippet of possibility of this blooming romance between Tyler and I, it was um, not Eden, but it was Jackie. Friend, yeah. yeah. So I think that'll be something that'll definitely be kind of a different story for, for mm-hmm. Tyler. Um, I always think like, especially like I love fantasy and like all these like romantic episodes. So um, like that special love story can kind of like do different things for you. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I think. And also I think that the CPS are coming for Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you think or what you want? I, want. <laughs> I will call it. <laughs> Um, I think it's interesting that Echo left Kenzie alone. I think she she's strategic. We've already established that. I think she's mm-hmm. going to come back in a more opportune time. That she sees some potential in this, mm-hmm. some ways that she could use it or take advantage of it in the future. Um, I also think that something happened with these keys that it was something that the kids enjoy growing up and something I think tragic happened related to the high school friends. I think there's obviously more than what Ellie told us. And I think out of that place, that's why that's why Uncle Duncan is so upset with the house and that's why they never talked about it because they were aware of how great these keys are, but they also see saw the keys at their worst and sure. how powerful they are. So I don't know. I guess time will tell. But these were really good episodes. I'm glad we kicked yes. it up a notch. Yes. Yeah. It got really interesting. So but with that being said, that is all for tonight. Guys, where can we find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at, at Lauren Kling, L-O-R-E-N-K-L-I-N-G, and Tuesday nights for the Schitt's Creek After Show. And you can find me on Instagram at Niam Janice, N-Y-A-M-J-N-I-C-E. Feel free to message me. I'm always happy to talk about Lock and Key with you guys. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at the Brian Santos. You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Princess C, just the letter C, TV. 
Bye, guys. See Bye, you next time. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.